you will stop using the octane once you understand this. The Fennec is better than the octane. But even though the Fennec is technically better than the octane, I don't recommend you switch to it. I'm going to explain that even though there are a few reasons the Fennec might technically be a better car for hardcore comp players, especially at the pro level, for the average player who switches to it, you will play worse. And this is especially true if you don't understand the real difference between the Fennec, the Octane, and the six, yes, six hitbox types in Rocket League. If you're new here, my name's Luke, and I'm a peak GC3 coach with almost 4,000 in-game hours and way more coaching. So this video is 100% just my personal experience and research. Look, I'm just a guy on the internet who wants to help people get better at Rocket League. But if it's worth anything, I do run Rocket League's number one live coaching program. It's called the Grand Champ Roadmap, and we help flat through champ ranked players like you watching rank up in just six weeks or less. So if that's you and you want to join the now 184 students we have actively training, DM me with the keyword Fennec below and we can talk details about how to rank up the fastest. Warning, I only have six full-time coaches on call right now. So once we hit 210 students, we're going to have to freeze enrollment. Point is, if you want in now while we're still open, my Discord will be first link down in the description below. DM me there. Otherwise, let's settle the debate on which car is the best in Rocket League. Okay, there are five major factors you need to understand to know which car is going to be best for you. Number one, you need to understand the Octane hitbox and the reason it's the best hitbox in the game. Number two, you need to understand why the Fennec is actually more consistent than the Octane. And this is a really important point. Number three, you need to understand something called the subtle variation effect, which I'll talk about later. Number four, you need to understand the placebo effect which you've probably heard about but might not understand. And number five, you need to understand the most important factor of all, how personal experience will bias your play. So those are the five major factors that I'm going to cover. And at the end, I'll summarize it with the bottom line or basically what you should do based on those five factors and how to know exactly which car is best for you. Factor number one, the Octane hitbox. You see, there are six different types of hitboxes in Rocket League. You have the Octane, as well as several other popular hitboxes you may have seen, like the Plank, uh, the Merc, and honestly, there are a couple other, but they, they don't really matter. The point is, <laughs> apart from the hitbox and appearance, all cars in Rocket League have identical stats. However, what people don't realize is that even though many cars will have identical stats, a few of the hitboxes have marginally better swivel and drift speeds than other hitboxes. And this is the main reason the Octane hitbox is the best. There are five major factors that affect hitboxes in Rocket League. You have length, width, height, and then sort of two settings in one that make up angular velocity, which is basically just turn radius or turn speed. You know, how tight you can make your turns left and right. Turn speed is almost a non-factor because the difference between each car is so tiny, but length, height, and width actually vary a ton between different cars. For example, if we look at the Merc, we see that the length is 120. This puts it at the fifth highest length on the list. Height, however, is number one. So the Merc is basically the tallest car, while its width is around 76, which puts it as the sixth or last place for width. Together, these factors make the Merc one of the best cars for 1v1 play, and specifically 50-50s. However, because it only really has one good stat in the height, it's not a good all-around or balanced car. And outside of, you know, maybe Pale Rider and super high-ranked 1v1, one, most people aren't going to play well with the Merc. Another great example is take a look at the Breakout here. The Breakout has a length of 131.49, so it's number one for length, but only top five for height and width. What this means is that the Breakout is very good for air dribbling, and you'll see a lot of unlimited boost free play freestylers using the Breakout to hit insane clips. But once again, just like the Merc, because it's not balanced, this 
isn't going to be used much in comp and you're not going to see the breakout in any pro games. The point is, if we come back to the Octane, what you'll see is that the length is actually the worst of any card in Rocket League. The hitbox length is number six, last place. But the thing about the Octane is it has a top two height and width rating, which I'm going to argue are the most important factors for comp because the height and the width is what affects the consistency of most of your touches. You know, if you're hitting the ball from the front of your car, which you're gonna do most of the time. And because it's top two, the Octane is also gonna have pretty good performance and consistency when it comes to 50-50s. This right here is the reason the Octane hitbox is really the only hitbox that gets used at the pro levels or in high level comp play. Point is, all of that to say, the Octane is the best overall car. However, it is important to note that the car isn't as long as many of the other ones, and this will become important. We'll come back to it later. Okay, factor number two. Now that you understand the Octane hitbox, you need to understand why the Fennec is more consistent than the Octane. You know how we were talking about hitboxes earlier? There are, you know, six different types of hitboxes. Well, the Fennec and the Octane actually both use the Octane hitbox. Now, once you understand that, you might think to yourself, wait, if they have the same hitbox, then how could one possibly be better than the other? I mean, fundamentally, they're the same car. And yeah, on paper, they're technically the same car. But when it comes to performance, something that might matter more than the actual true hitbox is something called the visual hitbox. And here's where things get complicated. The thing is, the true hitbox and the visual hitbox in Rocket League rarely ever match up. And Buck will help me with some visuals on screen. Appreciate you, Buck. But if you look here, or if you just turn on the hitbox ticker in your Bacchus mod plugins, what you'll see is that the hitbox of every car doesn't actually line up with what the car looks like on your screen. And this right here is the number one reason that the Fennec is taking over right now. So this is super important to understand. I'm gonna argue that the most important factor for how consistent a car is in ranked and in your games is not how good the actual hitbox is. It's how true the visual hitbox matches up with the real hitbox. In other words, you want to minimize the difference, right? We want to minimize the miss box where it would look like you're hitting the ball on your screen, but then it was just a visual glitch and you miss it. Hopefully that makes sense. If we do side by side right here and we break down the two car hitboxes, this is where you'll realize why the Fennec is better. What you'll notice is that the Octane visual box extends forward past its true hitbox, you know, towards the front bottom of the car, and it extends back and above the true hitbox on what I think is called like the spoiler of the car. Point is the Fennec matches up slightly, just ever so slightly better on the front and on the back of the car. The takeaway is, and this is where pro play comes in, because the Fennec has a closer match to the true hitbox, it's going to be a better overall car, especially when you're making touches off of the back of your car. So think anytime you're in an awkward situation and you're reversing or bringing it back to pro play, think anytime you're making a redirect off the top or back of your car. In these situations, the Fennec is probably gonna be more reliable than the Octane. And this is why I think the Fennec is taking over in pro play right now, is because a while ago, it wasn't that common to have to hit insane redirects off the back of your car or off the top of your car. But nowadays, as you know, the meta has become more and more mechanical, hitting crazy angles and hitting crazy redirect is not just a nice to have thing for a pro player, it's a must have. That is why pros are now starting Starting to realize the Fennec is better. That and the fact that the Fennec came out way later. Point is, what factor number two means, the higher ranked you are in Rocket League, the better the Fennec becomes. Factor number three, the third thing you need to understand to decide whether or not you should switch to the Fennec is something called the subtle variation effect. Now, this is actually a major competitive edge that I haven't really heard any, very, very few other people talk about. Um, and I, I first heard of it from a guy called Flow State GG, who I'll have linked down in the description below. But basically, here's what scientists did in the experiment they found with the subtle variation effect. What they did was they challenged gamers to learn a aiming task, learn a sensitivity task. What they found is that the players 
who used the same sensitivity for this experiment for the entire trial duration actually learned slower than a group where they randomly, they didn't tell them this by the way, where they randomly switched the sensitivity of their button. And this is really interesting because if we think about, you know, a game like Rocket League, you know, this could obviously translate to just, you know, controller sensitivity. And for those of you who don't know, this is the reason that I recommend you change your sensitivity over time, right? Because if you change it slightly and you don't really think about whether you're turning it up or down, you just change it slightly. This kind of hacks a pathway in your brain called reconsolidation, which makes you learn faster. But bringing it back to Octane versus Fennec, it's probably reasonable to say that if you changed your car design just slightly, not so much that you actually change the game, right? So not so much that you're actually changing the hitbox. We're not talking about changing from Octane to Merc. We're simply talking about staying in the Octane hitbox but changing the visual representation, it would stand from this experiment at least that the group who switches their car would learn faster than the group who just stays constant throughout. That's at least the theory. And so maybe, just maybe, I don't know, this might be the reason that some of the best pro players, funnily enough, if you look at them, they all switch between Octane and Fennec. They're all like dual player. They could play both car. I don't know. Maybe that's a factor, but it would stand to reason that if you change your car every couple weeks or something, maybe there's some benefit to learning faster, at least over the long term. Over the short term, factor number five is going to come into play. Just something to think about. Next thing you need to understand, factor number four, the placebo effect. For those of you who don't know, the placebo effect is actually very well researched at this point. I, I like to think of it as the competence effect. Simply having the confidence or simply thinking something makes you play better, and this has been studied and shown, will actually make you play better. I think it's silly that some players think like, you know, the Dominus makes me play better. You know, I only play good with Alpha Boost or I only play good with the White Octane. But I mean, if you think it helps, technically it, it, it does help. That's what the placebo effect is. So now that you've watched this video, you kind of know the science. So it's going to be harder to trick yourself into it. But if you have a friend who just doesn't know anything and, you know, they think it makes them play better, don't tell them. Don't tell them it doesn't make them play better because maybe they will. But on to factor number five, personal experience. This is honestly what I think is the factor that trumps everything else up until this point in the video. And so it's really important to understand. Let's say the Fennec is just better straight up. It has a 2% advantage on Octane. It's just technically better, but you've never used the Fennec before in rank. And up until this point, you're sitting, I don't know, GC1, you've only used the Octane up until this point. Is the Fennec technically 2% better? Yeah, let's say it is. But if you have a thousand hours on the Octane and you try to switch to the Fennec and you go into a ranked that day, what do you think you'll play better with? The Octane, which you spent a thousand hours with, or the Fennec, which you spent zero hours with? I mean, I think most of us would agree the answer is going to be the Octane. Whatever you're more comfortable with, even if the hitbox isn't you know quite as good, the fact that you are used to it, that you know how it works, will make you play better. So on the other side, would someone with a thousand Fennec hours probably have a 2% advantage on somebody with a thousand octane hours? I think they would. I, I think based on the hit boxes here, it's hard, it's hard to say they wouldn't. But this is where the effects are so slim. I think personal experience has a bigger sway. Since we have no way to practice this, we can only kind of theorize. And it's my theory of personal experience, what you are more comfortable with as a player is going to be more important than the 1% or 2% hitbox advantage that the Fennec has. So this leads us to the final section of the video. Bottom line, the ultimate question, the question that you want to know the answer to, Luke, what car should I use? Here's my answer. It depends. <laughs> Kind of, <laughs> kind of, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I just had to say it depends just to bother some people. Um, No, it, it's pretty clear. Short term, I recommend you play the car you are most experienced with. And this is the reason that when you see me play on stream or in my road to SSL or just in the clips in the background of this video, you see that most of these clips are recorded with the Octane because I have over 3000 hours with the Octane and maybe 10, 100 with the Fennec. So I'm going to play best with the car that I have the most experience with, that I've been training with, that I've hit redirects with, that I've had weird reads with. I'm going to know this car the best. So short term, I recommend you do the same. If you want to just win that day, use the car you're most experienced with. However, if you want to get better over the long term, the best way is to swap between the Octane and the Fennec every couple of weeks. Just like you see 
many of the pros do and prioritize the fennec in your ranked games because the fennec is technically better you can probably get some gains from the subtle variation effect by switching car every you know, couple weeks or, you know, just main Fennec, just play one card, just play Fennec, just play Octane and get some benefits from the subtle variation effect by changing your sensitivity as long as you have enough hours to sink in. Okay. I know that was a lot. And if you're confused after watching this, I didn't do my job. Hopefully just, just rewatch the intro and just ignore the rest of the video. Hopefully just rewatch the intro. Don't pay attention to any other parts of the video, but huge. Thank you. I want to give a shout out to Thanavik. This video was inspired by Thanavik's video titled why all pros are using this car. Thank you, Thanavik, for giving me permission to make a response to your video. I think your video was amazing. It definitely gives a ton of background on this. So if you guys are interested, go check that video out. I'll have it linked on screen. And I'll also have all the resources and the research I did for this video. Honestly, I'll just, I'll throw the script down in the description below if you're interested. Otherwise, if that was too much, you know what? Just go watch my flip reset tutorial or go watch my air dribble tutorial. That's a lot more fun. Click that video. I'll see you in that one. <laughs> Thanks for watching.